Thank you for trying financetrainingcourse.com, an online collection of risk, puzzle, treasury and portfolio management resources created by risk and treasury professionals. Point of view by looking at both the asset side and the liability front. And together, using this combined framework to create a mechanism for banks to look at their liquidity risk. Now, in addition to in addition to the ratios, the framework also introduced a number of monitoring tools that banks and regulators could look at, could use to review where you stood. So the first obviously was contractual maturity mismatch. Uh, and what this basically meant was that if you have a five-year loan, is it funded by a one-year deposit? If you have a 10-year bond in your investment and treasury portfolio, is it funded by a three-month deposit? And let's use this to calculate uh, what would happen if some of your short-term lines dried up and the markets tightened. The second was concentration of funding. So with respect to a given counterparty or with respect to a, a collection of counterparties, is your funding risk associated and linked with with a given name? Excuse me. And and within that within that given name, are you exposed to significant liquidity exposure if that given name either goes under or does not renew or refuses to renew that line? The third piece was in terms of assets, especially those assets that are not pledged or occupied as collateral against any other additional line or funding sources that you put aside. So in terms of the amount of assets that you have that you could quickly convert into cash without any restrictions, without violating any covenants without getting into trouble with your primary sources of funding. Then there was a fourth category that looked at, let's not look at just USD risk. If you're an international bank, there's a good chance that you have exposure in a range of multiple foreign currencies. So let's look at your liquidity profile. Let's look at your liquidity coverage ratio by each major currency that you work and operate with. And finally, the last and final piece was that generally when a crisis happens, generally when things start to fall, somehow, and there is, there is, there, there, there is many ways to debate this, somehow the market is always the first to find out. The market is always the first to find out before the regulators, the first to find out before the rating agencies. It's, it's certainly the first to find out before the creditors and the shareholders. So the idea was, let's look at, let's identify a, a, a range of market tools, which are basically prices, which are basically your credit spread, which is basically your credit default spread, uh, your credit default swap spread. So, so there are a number of sources, especially for large institutions, especially for institutions in both North American investment open markets where there is enough information available in the market that you can use to evaluate if something is happening that has not as yet come out completely in the public domain so if I if I take a step back essentially what we're saying is that you now had two coverage ratios liquidity coverage and net stable funding and side by side with these two ratios, you had five additional tools that you could use to monitor liquidity. So combined with the ICAP standard, the, the internal capital adequacy assessment standard, these additional liquidity adjustments basically filled up a big hole that existed on the risk, liquidity risk side. And both with ICAP, as well as the Basel II, liquidity adjustments, the focus was that rather than looking at the asset side, 
which is what we did when we did MCR. Rather than looking at just the asset side, it is important for a bank to look at both the asset and the liability side. Thank you for trying financetrainingcourse.com, an online collection of risk, puzzle, treasury and portfolio management resources created by risk and treasury professionals.